Hello, I'm David Valdez, and uh, today I want to talk to you about solving quadratic equations by completing the square. And um, <coughs> this is kind of an extension of what we were doing previously with solving quadratic equations by taking a square root. And uh, ultimately, it comes to that. But um, let me ask a couple uh, questions, cursory questions. Uh, what square are we talking about completing, and uh, why are we trying to complete this square? So let me just uh, start off with giving you uh, what a binomial squared looks like. It's generally a binomial that we are trying to uh, find the square of in solving quadratic equations. But um, before I get to that, let's take a look, as I said, at just kind of a general uh, binomial squared, x plus b quantity squared, and see what that looks like. So if I had x plus b squared, I'm just going to expand this out uh, just so we can get a good uh, picture of what this thing looks like. It is x plus b times x plus b. If we were to multiply this out in the normal fashion, we would have x squared plus bx. We get another plus bx. And finally, a b squared on the end plus b squared. We combine the like terms in the middle to obtain x squared plus 2bx plus b squared. And you may recognize this as a uh, perfect square trinomial on the right side, which of course it is. It comes out to that thing squared. And um, in particular, I'm highlighting the case where we have a 1 as the leading coefficient of x squared. But suppose we were given a problem where we didn't have this perfect square information so that we could go from this to that. Um, suppose we were given a problem where we had to fill in some missing information. So for example, just again generally and related to what I just wrote, suppose we had um, just the first part of this. Suppose we had x squared plus bx equals some other thing, some constant, uh, or in fact any other thing. Now, how could I solve this equation? You might think, well, I can factor out an x. Um, but then that doesn't work because this is not 0. If this were 0, you could factor out an x and solve it from there. But if this is anything uh, not 0, and maybe I'll just say that, p is not equal to 0. Okay. If, it if it's anything not equal to 0, then we're going to need something else. So how can I make this into this so that I can change it into a binomial squared? Well, <clears throat> it's actually kind of simple, um, and it's going to exploit the fact that I can add anything I want to both sides of this equation. So I can add something to this to make it look like that. What should I add? Well, it's obvious since I used the first part of this. Uh, oh, well, I need a 2, actually. Not obvious. Plus 2. There we go. Now it should be obvious, since I used the first part of this, that I can just add a b squared, right? But where does that come from? It turns out that this b squared is always half of the middle term squared. Okay, And how come? Because if I were to factor this, I'm looking for two things that multiply to give me this, that add to give me this. b times b is b squared. b plus b, which is 2b, gives me this uh, middle term. So if I want to add something over here, I'm going to add half of this thing, this half of the coefficient of the middle term, squared. So here's what it looks like. Let me just rewrite this. x squared plus 2bx, and here we go, plus half of 2b, okay, and I'm writing it uh, formally so that you can apply this to other problems. Uh, I'm adding half of the middle term squared, and I've got to do that to both sides of the equation to maintain the balance. Okay. And of course, uh, you can see that these 2's cancel, and we just end up with b squared. So this looks like x squared plus 2bx plus b squared is equal to p plus b squared. Okay. Same thing on both sides. And now, because of how I wrote it up there, you recognize this automatically. 
as x plus b squared equals all this stuff over here. Uh, in fact, let me uh, put a little bit more space here. p plus b squared. Why did I put more space? You can see the next step coming. I put more space because I'm going to have to take a square root of both sides. And when you do that, don't forget your plus and minus. And now we can continue to solve for b. I can say that x plus b is equal to plus and minus the root of p plus b squared, whatever these things are. And then subtract the b from both sides. Okay. Can't do it from under this guy because there's the radical there. And that gives me solutions. x equals negative b plus or minus the root of p plus b squared, whatever numbers those things represent. But the point was, when I'm trying to complete the square, the idea is that I do not have all the information for this perfect square trinomial, so I've got to fill part of it in. And when I do, it looks like this kind of form so that I can factor it into uh, a binomial squared. So for example, let's do that again with a numbered example. Suppose we had uh, x squared plus 6x equals uh, 25. Okay. Now, again, I can't really factor this right away. What I could do, I could subtract the 25 from both sides and then attempt to try to factor it um, to solve the quadratic equation by factoring, but I'm going to try this method of completing the square, which means I'm going to add something to both sides and that thing that I'm going to add to both sides is always exactly half of this coefficient here in front of the x, half the middle term, squared. So let's do that. This gives me x squared plus 6x, and here's my addition, plus 6 over 2 squared. There's half the middle term squared. Equals on the other side, 25 plus half of that middle term squared. And let's see what happens from there. Uh, I could call this x squared plus 6x uh, plus 6 over 2 is 3 and 3 squared is 9. Now, actually going from here to this is, is an additional step you don't have to take. After you've added half the middle term squared, you can go directly to the binomial that's squared. Um, I just did it just to show what this might look like. Uh, if this number were here in the first place. Okay, 6 over 2 is 3 squared is 9, plus 25 is 34. This is my perfect square, which is x plus 3 quantity squared, because 3 times 3 is 9, 3 plus 3 is 6. Equals, leave a little space, 34. Continue by taking the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus and minus. So now I've got x plus 3 is equal to plus and minus root 34. All right, add, or excuse me, subtract 3 from both sides. And we end up with two solutions. x equals negative 3 plus and minus root 34. One solution is negative 3 plus root 34. The other solution is negative 3 minus root 34. If you can simplify the number under the root, then go ahead. Like if this were root 20, you could simplify that because there's a perfect square factor of 20. Um, 34 is what, uh, 17 times 2. So um, neither of those, both of those are prime numbers, 2 and 17. So that doesn't reduce. There's our final solution. And I think I've illustrated the idea of completing the square well enough. I hope so. Let us continue on to other examples uh, of completing the square so you can try it on your own.